Okay, joined now by Jose Enrique. And uh, Jose, thanks very much for doing this with us at the Anfield Raft. Thanks for taking the time. Um, we we all we all know that you went through some really dark times not so long ago, and we, we don't want to really get into that. You've done that. Uh, you've done those interviews. You've talked about that at length. And for anyone who doesn't know that story, I would recommend the interview that you did with Sid Lowe. Thought that was that was excellent on the subject. We want to talk about the good times, though, Jose. We want to talk about you know signing for Liverpool, scoring goals for Liverpool, playing with Luis Suarez, all that kind of stuff. So let's sort of start w- w- with the, the facts and figures, really. So 99 games for Liverpool. You scored a couple of goals. The one against Swansea was an absolute belter, by the way. Uh, ended up with a League Cup medal in 2012 as well. And yet a £6 million or thereabouts signing from Newcastle United in 2011. Uh, signed by Kenny Dalglish and then five years at the club. Let's start with that. Let's start with the when you signed for Liverpool, Jose. Um, how did that come about and, and what was Kenny Dalglish like? Well, it was because I have one year left in Newcastle. Um, and obviously Liverpool came. Um, they had Fabrelli in that time, but well, it, it was unlucky for him because he had a few injuries and was Daniel Lager playing as a left back, I believe, in precision. And, and they were really interested in, well, to be honest, they wanted to sign Clichy, but Clichy went to City and, and I was the second option and, and, and they signed me and I was, well, imagine, it was really, really good for me. Kenny Douglas, a legend like this. Uh, Sent me for an amazing club like Liverpool. I know it wasn't in his best time, but the owners they wanted to spend. They spent that summer a lot of money. Yeah. So I, I, I go there and say, listen, I'm going to one of the best teams in the world, five way Euro Cup. So obviously it's, it's no it's no brainer. So obviously it wasn't too too difficult to decide to go to Liverpool really. I, I want to talk to you as well about your sort of your playing style. Um, I, I know that you were nicknamed earlier in your career uh, El Toro, the Bull. Yeah. And, uh, mm-hmm. and when when we used to watch you, when I used to go to Anfield and would watch you play and talk about you with my mates, one of the things we liked about you is when you just set off on a run and you'd just be like knocking knocking people out the way, and you know, and it was great because it would it would lift the crowd. It you know what I mean? It was. It was a very sort of unique style, really, I thought, for a left-back to be doing that. Where, where, where did that playing style come from? Was that something that it was coached or did it just happen naturally because you were you're a big lad upstairs, weren't you, so you could use your body? Yeah, well, I, I believe it's, um, it's one of the things that I have. I never learned to play like this. I run quite straight as well, you know, like, <laughs> so it, it was it's my way of playing. Obviously, everyone has his way of playing, and that was my way of playing. I, uh, I Like you said, I've always been a big lad, and, and I use that as a, as a, as a positive thing. I, I knew how to put my body, I, I know how to put my bomb, you know, in good positions. You know, <laughs> to, they, they couldn't take the ball and, and I use it as, a, as an strength, you know, and, and was one, one of my strengths there, yeah. I wanted to ask you too as well, um, you, you know, you come to Liverpool the first season or so, it's great you're in the side pretty much all the time. Uh, I mentioned that you obviously, you win a medal with Liverpool as well in the League Cup final. I've got to ask you though, and I'm sure you've been asked about this before, but I think it's such a mad thing to see. Uh, when when you go back to Newcastle with Liverpool, obviously Pepe Reina's sent off for uh, for the situation yeah. with uh, James Perch, I think it is. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And you you end up in goal for sort of eight minutes or so, and you keep a clean sheet as well. To be fair. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, the, be- the best goalkeeper that season, you know, <laughs> got more clean sheets definitely. Well, how did that, did you expect to be going in goal? Was that something you talked about or was it just like Jose going goal? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was like that, literally. It was, Kenny was like, okay, just going goal. And, and in that moment, to be honest, I wasn't really happy about it because obviously it's against your ex-club, you know, yeah. away from home. Everyone in the stadium was singing my name for them. Hey, minutes, Jose Enrique, we are at top six. I remember like it was just yeah. yesterday. Now I remember that's a nice story, to be honest, because it was good, you know, because you can see the stadium is still obviously hurt, but they loved me, you know, because they sing my name for eight minutes. They're Jose Enrique, we are at top six. Because when I left, I said that Newcastle is not going to be a, a top six anymore. That's why I go to a team that is going to be. And I remember when we were there, they were fifth and we were sixth on the table. 
So obviously it, it was a good game. Yeah, it was a good game and I experienced. Obviously it wasn't the best because we lost, but yeah, it's a nice experience. I have the gloves and the t-shirt of that game of Pepe oh, yeah. here in my house, yeah, for, for a memory. And so it's a good memory, yeah. And uh, had you ever played in goal before? Had you played in goal in training? Was there any reason why they picked you? Never. I'm so bad as well because, for example, <laughs> Luis Suarez, for example, is good in goal. It's, uh, is probably it? you see him, yeah, he's really in trainings and everything. Sometimes when we play as a joke, you know, and he, he plays as a goalkeeper and he's quite good. But me, I'm so bad. I'm not agile at all. Yeah, like you say before, I'm more physique, more like that. I'm not very uh, flexibility, very stretchy, very guy. So when I went in goal, I say, well, I hope they don't score, you know. And <laughs> so it wasn't, it wasn't bad. Yeah, it was one player less. The, obviously, the boss decided that and, and obviously he's the boss. So, so I went in goal and, and it's a nice memory now, to be honest. Yeah. And, and talking about nice memories as well. I mean, you, you were involved in what I... And my friends still talk about as one of the, the, the best goals we've seen, which was against I think that was against Newcastle as well. You you play a, a yeah. you play a 70 yard ball to Luis Suarez. He controls it with his shoulder, which was unbelievable. Goes yeah. around the keeper, puts it in. I mean, it's a great ball from yourself. It's unbelievable control from Luis Suarez. And what when you when you saw that pass, when you played that pass, were you like it's Suarez, so I'll try that ball. If it was other players, maybe would you have not played that ball? Um, I believe uh, everyone played their strength. I, I was was one of my characteristics. I used to be good in long balls. Uh, I should have improved my crossing on the on the at the end, you know. But from far away, I was good, you know, cr- uh, putting balls there and. And we had a good connection. I believe, obviously, have a good yeah. connection with Luis Suarez. Is not very. Very difficult, you know, and but I was looking for him. My first part was always looking for him because you knew he was different to everyone else. Um, him or Stevie, really, was uh, my two passes. You know, first option, Luis, if no, Stevie next to me because yeah. I know he's gonna do a 50 years, 50 years pass. So, always was like that. Like, like you know, I give so, so many assists to Luis, but obviously. Because why? Because that goal, yeah, it's amazing pass, it's true, but what he does after it is... Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's, it's 80% is his goal completely, the control and how he take the keeper, go behind Scolocini uh, and score that goal is, is unbelievable. Well, what was what was Lewis like in training and to be around the, at the club? Because obviously we seen him on the pitch and, you know, he, he did a couple of mad things, obviously, when he was at <laughs> Liverpool. What was he, but he was also absolutely brilliant. I mean, you know, the Norwich game always stands out for me where he was just unplayable that night and scored some unbelievable goals. What what was he like in training? Was he exactly the same? Was he the same intensity? Exactly the same. Yeah. Exactly, exactly the same. It was as annoying. I remember one training uh, with Daniel Lager that for me has been one of the best. He's been very unlucky with injuries as well, but he's been one of the best uh, centre-backs. Uh, well, the, for me, the best centre-back I play with. Uh, so he was unbelievable, and I remember in trainings uh, Luis Suarez throwing the ball at, like he used to do, like he is still do, you know, like throw the ball at you and then kick the ball in his head on his knee or whatever, and he take the ball always in front of him, you know. And I say, he said, obviously said in a bad way, like fucking lucky this guy and everything. I said, <laughs> and I said, Danny, when he does it all the time, he's not lucky anymore, right? yeah. you know. And and you can see he like as well, you know, I, I, when he plays against Real Madrid, for example, with Barcelona now, who, who he goes against? Sergio Ramos. Why? Because he knows he's going to kick him, he's going <laughs> to... Luis is a, is, a, is a very special player. For me, he's with Stevie, the best two players I ever played with. Luis is, is unbelievable. Off the pitch is what people really... Obviously, people judge him because, like you say, he did some crazy things on the pitch, that's true. Uh, that he knows as well he was wrong. Uh, yeah. But off the field, he's an unbelievable guy. I'm still in touch with him. Uh, and for me, he was one of my best mates in the dressing room there, really. We have a good understanding. He has a lovely family, like everything can see as well. And, and, he's, a, and he's a top guy. Yeah. He's a top guy. Well, what, what was it like for you as well in training? I mean, I heard an interview with Jordan Henderson recently, and obviously he signed for the club at the same time as you and made his debut on the same day, I think, against Sunderland. Um, but Henderson talked about when he first arrived at the club. He, you know, he, he was a bit like, "Oh wow, Liverpool!" And, and in training, he said, "I felt like I really had to prove myself in every session, prove that I was good enough." 
And he said Suarez pulled a few faces at him in training, you know, like if he misplaced a pass or whatever. And he said he wanted, like, I think Henderson said something like, you know, I, I wanted to kill him. I, I wanted to get at him because he, 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 he said, I felt like he was disrespecting me. But it's that sort of, it's that will to win that he had, isn't it? But did you feel that when you came to Liverpool that you, you almost you had to prove yourself in training? You had to, you know, play at a certain level? To be honest, when I arrived to Liverpool, I started well straight away. That was uh, uh, what you're talking about happens to me when I was in Newcastle. When I was in Newcastle, it happens to me. My first year was really difficult for me. You know, it was my first year in the Premier League, my first year away from home, uh, from Spain, another language. That was difficult. But when I arrived to Liverpool, uh, yeah, obviously the target is completely different to Newcastle. Uh, you wanted to get in the top four in that time, at least. And, and it was different target. But as soon as I arrived, I, I remember I arrived on Friday, medical, everything. And on Saturday, I was playing. And, and, and I, I did well straight away, I believe. So it, it was like that. But Jordan arrived in, dif in different situations. He arrived from, from Sunderland, young age, really young age, paid a massive tra uh, transfer fee in that time. 20 million in that time was massive tra uh, yeah. transfer fee. And I believe, I, I agree with what he said, when he arrived as well, he was um, he, everyone was saying like, oh my God, seriously, for 20 year old, play 20 million is crazy. You know, he has mm -hmm. quality. You can see, but it's crazy. And then that's what I, I love about uh, Jordan, you know, and uh, apart from Jordan is a top guy. And every time I go and, and see the team, that is the first time, is the first guy who come and, and say hi. And I speak to him, he's an unbelievable guy. Um, he proved himself to everyone, even to Liverpool fans as well, because yeah. I know the, I love him at the start. And, and he proved, like, I remember when he arrived running everywhere, like he still does. He can run for six games in a row, uh, like Milly does as well. And, and, and you can see every time after training, he stays, he training, he everything. And, and he wanted to prove all these people wrong. Uh, all his teammates that doesn't think that he was good enough to play there. Uh, prove himself as well, obviously, and prove the fans as well. That obviously, at the start, they were comparing him and... They still compare him until no long ago with Stevie, and at the end, no yeah. one can compare with Stevie, you know. And but the reality, I was so happy for seriously for obviously the fans, the club, everything, the Champions League, myself, because obviously, like you know, I follow Liverpool like uh, they are in my heart now forever. Uh, but I was the most happy person. I was happy was uh, was for him really when I saw him in the after party, you know, I told him, I say, the most person I'm more happy for is for you because I know you have the pressure all the time yeah. that everyone is putting you, that you are the, the next Steven Gerrard of the team. Everyone is comparing yourself with him all the time. And now no one can say anything. You leave that trophy. You leave the Champions League. You are an unbelievable captain. You've been captain for so long. And now for me, in the last three seasons, Jordan has been unbelievable, unbelievable for Liverpool. And he's a different person now, isn't he? To that, to that person you you trained with on the first day, isn't he? He's he's, he's grown into himself. He's a, he's a leader. He leads by example how he plays, but he's also a, he's a, he's a talker as well. I mean, yeah. I, I guess he, I guess he wasn't like that on that first day when you saw him. No, he wasn't. And but you have to realize as well. I believe when you get as a footballer, obviously I'm not playing football anymore. But when I used to play, and you grow older, yeah, you maybe don't have the energy as you used to have when you're younger, in this case with Henderson, he started exactly the same energy as he used to, he runs like crazy, but you are more clever, you have more games behind you, you have everything. I believe when you are young, it's very difficult to do impact in this type of thing. For, for example, Trent Arnold is done with this team, you know, straight away from the second team and be the best right back in the world right now. Is that's, that's not normal, it's not, yeah. it's not, it's not happening, you know, in, in many teams. That, you know, Phil Ford and everyone talking about him, top player, this guy, doesn't play in City, you know, and, and Pep Guardiola say all the time, he never seen anyone like with his qualities and, and doesn't play. And look, then Trent arrived and then he's been the best driver for the last two seasons in the world. So at the end, it's very difficult as a young age, really, to, to go in a team like Liverpool and make, and make an impact. And for Henderson was that. And then obviously, Stevie then left. Uh, he already had a few years in his back and he took the responsibility and for me it's been for me this season I believe obviously Van Dyke has been unbelievable Trent Andy Alisson but all of them really the, the, what they've done in the Premier League is incredible but for me I will give a player of the season to Jordan Henderson I think I, he, he, he deserved it he's been unbelievable not just 
on the pitch, off the pitch, I know how he is as well. And when the, and when he's not been on the team, the team, you could see that. You could, you can see he was missing. So tell us a little bit, Jose, about about the managers. I know we talked we, we talked a little bit there about Kenny Dalglish and he signed you, but also obviously you played under under Brendan Rodgers. And then you had a little bit of time under Klopp as well. And, and Klopp gave you the armband against Exeter, which must have been a, a brilliant moment for you. But un, under Brendan, Brendan obviously changed the system a little bit. Did, did he, he was giving you a little bit more freedom, wasn't he? He wanted you to be to be a wing-back, basically. And you obviously liked to get forward anyway. But when he literally said, and now I want you to get in the box. Was, yeah, yeah. Was, was that nice to hear from the manager? Yeah, it was good. He he trusted me a lot. Uh, Brennan was an unbelievable manager for Liverpool, I believe, as well. What happened with Brennan is obviously he nearly win the league. And then obviously uh, he signed a lot of players that look, they're performing now. Look, Luis, uh, uh, Luis Alberto, Luis Yaguaspas, look at so many players that he signed. But like I told you, young players in that time that come in other countries, so maybe it wasn't. You know, it, it, you need them two, three years that in a club like Liverpool you don't have. Uh, that's yeah. the problem. Uh, but for me, he was a top man. He teach me a lot. In trainings, he was unbelievable. And I still in touch. Yesterday, I touched him about, obviously, that I hope him and his family is good. And he replied to me. I still in touch with him. Last year, I went and visited him and Colo Ture because Colo is working with him as well. Right. So I still uh, very much in touch with him. And, and he was really, really important for me. Obviously, then the injury came. But before that, he was a really good manager for me, yeah. He was a really good manager. Well, what about Jürgen then? Obviously, as you say, you were struggling with, with injuries and you had a bit of a tough time towards the end of your Liverpool career. But it was a nice moment, that wasn't it, to, to get the captaincy against Exeter? Yeah, I believe he knew. I believe he knew that because everyone in the club obviously told him as well, the player I used to be and, and he could see I, I could and he's been a player as well himself and... And I believe that he want me maybe to reward me as well as, well, I know you are not the same anymore. You're living in the summer. Uh, so I'm going to give you that, you know, as, uh, as, a, as, a, as a goodbye, you know, as a goodbye of the club, you know, like, OK, enjoy your, your moments here because obviously I know you're struggling, you know, to, to play yourself again the, the way you used to play. So it was a very, very good gesture for him. And. And he was really important for me as well. He made me learn a lot of things as well. Even if he's not playing, what I like the most of him, he was in, he's on, honestly from the start. Uh, that was really, really good for me. I Obviously, you don't like it to hear it at the start because I was the first one to didn't recognize that I wasn't the, the, the same as I used to because of the injury. And that was difficult to accept. But, but he told me from the start, he said, listen, uh, it's the way it is. You have to accept it. And he was really honest. So I will always be, be grateful to him as well. And, and he, he made a lot of things to make. Well, for me, uh, as you go, grow older in football, uh, you believe even more. I believe that the main person in, in the team is the manager. And when you are younger, you don't think that. You think, oh, we do good players and this and that. You can win things. Yeah, but you need someone that obviously is the boss and put you everyone in the same direction. And what he's done with Liverpool is unbelievable. He put Liverpool again where Liverpool deserves to be. That is obviously the best team in the world right now. Um, we talked about Luis Suarez there, who I presume is probably one of the most talented players you, you've ever played with. In terms of opponents that you faced, and particularly when you were in a Liverpool shirt, who, who would you say was your, your toughest opponent? Who gave you the hardest games when you were when you were a Liverpool player? Uh, in the Premier League, they're all good players. That's yeah. the thing. You know, at the end, you play against Newcastle. I remember playing against Ben Alpha. You play in that time against Tottenham. You play against Gareth Bale or Aaron Lennon. That they. Just fast players with a lot of space, you know, and I was lucky that I was quick as well. So I could I could have one by one with them good enough. But it was a lot of difficult players. But I always said that obviously it wasn't with Liverpool, but the best two players I played against was Messi, obviously, when I played in Spain and Cristiano when I played in Newcastle. That was the best two players. But then obviously when as a Liverpool shirt, a lot of lot of players I can mention, Ben Alpha, Aaron Lennon, uh, Walcott when he plays there, uh, Gareth Bale play on the right as well when when he was in Tottenham against me a few times. So it's it's a lot of players that yeah, up there, yeah. Ryan no. Hicks as well, even yeah. even he was a lot older, Ryan Hicks as well, I can mention him. Antonio Valencia, he was a difficult opponent as well. So yeah. 
Well, I wanted to ask you about about fans as well, Jose. Obviously, you know what we do is is a fan fan produced media, if you like. Um, you were at two clubs where the support, I think, is maybe a little bit different to to other clubs. You know, Newcastle and Liverpool, both absolute cities where they absolutely love the football. It, it, it's twenty four seven. They never stop talking about it. Never stop thinking about it. Was that something that you know you you you, you noticed straight away, and you thought this is this is intense in these cities for football compared to maybe other places you were at? Well, like, like you say, Newcastle was already incredible. I, I believe in England, in general, it's incredible. But I've been lucky, very, very lucky, you know, to play for two that, uh, clubs that they have massive fan base. Obviously, mm-hmm. Liverpool have a lot more fan base because it's not just Liverpool, it's around the world, obviously, because it's a team that wins things as well. So, obviously, it has a lot more followers. But... It was incredible. I remember with, for example, Newcastle, we relegated to championship and we have 42,000 people in the stadium all the time. So it was incredible. And yeah. then you arrive to Liverpool. What I see the difference when I arrived to Liverpool, obviously the city, unbelievable, the stadium, unbelievable. The, in Newcastle as well, obviously, you want to win the game, but some games with a draw, you were happy. In Liverpool, you need to win. That was a lot of difference. So every game, you 0-0 is not enough. You have to win. Yeah. You have to go for the goal. And then when I realized more is when we go, we went away from home or when we were on holidays, I remember going to Dubai or going to Indonesia or going to places like that. And the fan base, wow, you were like, wow, that's unbelievable. <laughs> you know, uh, I remember when we went to Indonesia, you know, with Stevie and Luis and, and everything there. I remember seeing, well, Stevie was got there, you know, and, and I said to Steve, I said, you just have to come, you and Luis, the rest we can go home, you know, we, they, <laughs> they, they, you know because that, that's all they, they, they're claiming for, for you too, you know, like it was unbelievable, the fan base is, is unbelievable, and Liverpool, it, 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 it's a different level, it's unbelievable, and I still have the love from a lot of Liverpool fans, every time I post or every time I do something, it's, it's unbelievable, yeah. Well, I, I actually saw you. Um, you. You were with the fans at the New Camp, weren't you, when we played Barcelona in the yeah. in the Champions League semi final? And you were you were in the posh seats, either. You were in the yeah. you were you were in with the fans, weren't you? To, you to were, be, I, I have to be honest with you. No one knows that, but it was an accident, really. That you know, was because it? yeah, yeah, because uh, I got the tickets from Alberto Moreno. Right. And obviously, normally the tickets they give it to you to well to the other ex players, you know, and everything like that. And then he gave me the tickets and I went boom and I start seeing that, oh, Liverpool fans this way, you know, they put signs, you know, to yeah. go to the stadium that way. And I was going and I was seeing a lot, lot of Liverpool fans, a lot of Liverpool fans stopping me and, and taking pictures and everything. And I was walking, I said to my partner, I say, I think we're going somewhere different. I think, you know, like, and then when we realized we were with all the fans there, the fans couldn't believe that. But to be honest, I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. I, I, I went there, the fans were great. Great, so respectful as well because it was the first time they see me after my operation as well. So people was really like coming to me, but no, jumping or anything like that. Really respectful, really. I hope you were and everything. So it was an amazing, amazing, amazing experience that for me as well. Yeah, because we were there. You can see the players that small. I think yeah. you see them better on the TV, but the fans are still there and singing and and everything. So. And I remember after the game, I went to I went to the hotel well, because obviously the, play, the players they stay overnight. And I told them about it to Deja Lobre and Henderson. We were talking, Alberto and everything. They say, yeah, they put, he put you there. They were crying, laughing. I said, yeah, yeah. I said, I, said, I loved it. I said, I loved it. He said, it was really nice experience. And the fans they were they were great with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was lovely to see you there, and everyone was singing your name when I saw you. And yeah, it was yeah. A, it, it was a nice moment. Yeah, um, yeah, amazing. But, yeah. Wanted to ask you about sort of what you're doing now. I know everyone's sort of life and, and work is sort of curtailed by the, the coronavirus crisis that we're in the mid the midst of. But you're an agent now, aren't you? And you're working with your brother on that. Yeah. Um, what's that like, and, and and how are you finding doing that? Well, I'm gonna explain you a bit how I started. Really, my brother started in Villarreal when I started playing football. Then he worked for, for Wasserman, that I'm sure you know about them. It's, well, it's a company that was in England. Wasserman is very known in agency in England. Uh, it's an American company, but they work in England with a lot of Premier League and Championship players. And he worked there for five years. Uh, and then, obviously, he wanted to do it on his own because he could see he could see more benefits and he has the contacts already for. And he did it on his own and it's been really well for him. And then when I, obviously, I helped him when I was playing football and now he was helping me. And when I retired, 
I was struggling with him. That obviously after football, you can imagine like any 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 work is it, it, difficult really when you have to retire really with 31, 32. I retired. So studying something new and more after being a footballer, that is for me the best job in the world. Uh, obviously, I start with him and he's been helping me. We've been helping each other really because obviously being in the Premier League for nine years and in Spain as well, obviously give me a lot of contacts and a lot of experience play with and a lot of respect as well in the clubs. So we helping each other and well, just in January we did uh, Gonzalo Villar from Elche, second division here in Spain to Rome. Uh, that was a massive transfer because they pay five million for a kid that never played in La Liga. Uh, and he's, he's in Rome in the first team and he's already playing. Well, not now, obviously, but he's been yeah. playing. Yeah. Uh, so it's been going really well. And we already have a few things for, for the next transfer window. Obviously, it's no cannot work much now. Obviously, you cannot watch live games or can follow much. But he's still in touch with the players, he's still in touch with the clubs. They are still working behind behind closed doors really because obviously they cannot play but they want to to obviously advance talking because no one really knows what is going to happen i believe everything is going to continue as soon as this happens you cannot stop uh, i'm sure it was going to be one of your questions i really believe it's not going to stop the the, the the liverpool winning the league or the or the or the team fighting for relegation or anything like that they cannot do that no in la liga they already saying that they're going, to, they, they're going to continue as well yeah. in the second division because it's not fair when, well, we don't know, obviously, uh, when this is sorted, but you can stop one nearly full season because of this or for whatever, you know, it's not, it's not fair in any team, really, that teams that want to get promoted, lower leagues, Liverpool in this case, that is already a champion and everyone knows that, so... So I believe that everything just we're still working, but obviously not as much. Obviously, I cannot travel, I cannot see players, I cannot see clubs. So, but it's good. I'm enjoying it. To be honest, I'm enjoying it. It's different. It's different. Obviously, being a footballer will always be unreplaceable. Uh, yeah. That was incredible, and and play for a team like Liverpool, it, it was incredible. But it's, in life, you have to change your mind. Now I'm not a footballer anymore. I'm doing this and I'm grateful, you know, because at the end I still involved in football. I still talking to a lot of players. So I still doing what I love, really, is not playing football, but I still involved in football. So yeah. Yeah. I'm really happy with it. And, uh, and so let, let's imagine, Jose, that you uh, representing a player and he's, he's got a couple of options on the table, big clubs. Jürgen Klopp rings you up and says, I'm interested. If you had to go to that player and he, he had no connections to Liverpool, he knew who they were, but he didn't know too much about the city or about the club. How, how would you sell Liverpool to that player as a place to go and live and a place to go and work? For me, it sounds... I know I'm not from there, you know, and, and obviously uh, some people as well. I, be, I, be, I was there five years, but... You don't choose the, the the team you support, and I'm I'm telling you, I played for so many teams. Even as a younger, uh, well, when you're young, you support the, the the team your dad support, for example. In that case, was Valencia and everything like that. But but I don't know why really Liverpool affect more in my life than anyone else, more than Newcastle, more than anyone else. I love Newcastle, I love the place, and they were great to me. They're still great to to me, the fans, you know. But it's a place that. He gave me, he gave me everything. He gave me well, my partner and me her when I when I was playing with Liverpool, and she's the best person I ever have. You know, she's unbelievable. Uh, and then I was so happy at the club, and even with the, when I was injured, people has been treating me incredible. I couldn't play football anymore as I used to, and people is still treating me incredible. Then I'm playing for the legends, really. That is yeah. unbelievable. That some of the legends that I have to be fair, you know some. I can compare myself to some of the players that they play in there. You know, Fernando Torres is going to play there. Uh, Crouch is was going to play there. Fowler, Stevie, like it's unbelievable. You know, to have the chance that and and it wasn't it didn't come from me. It came from Kenny Douglas when I when we play Barcelona and we lost against Barcelona away from home. Uh, he said, "How are you feeling?" And I said, "I'm feeling okay now after after the operation and everything." I said, "He said, how are you feeling to play football again?" And I said, "Well, I'm playing. Feel good, yeah." Say, you want to play for the Legends? I say, wow, that will be incredible. You know, so I will always have this amazing love for, for Liverpool because that in my heart, they, they've been incredible through my illness as well. That is the, the worst time of my life. They've been incredible. So 
what I'm going to say to a player that wants to go to Liverpool, that it's not a better place to go. And the situation of the club right now as well is unbelievable. It's not a better place to go. Um, they, everyone can talk about Real Madrid, Barcelona. Yeah, you can maybe think about them because of the weather you have in Spain and the food. Yeah. yeah. But in terms of how you want to enjoy, how much you want to enjoy as a player, talking about as a player in Madrid or Barcelona or in Liverpool, you cannot compare. I believe. I, th I believe you ask, for example, Suarez say it no long ago as well. Suarez, you say which player he enjoyed to play. Yeah, obviously in Barcelona he's playing with the best player in the history. It's Messi, he's winning things as well. But you ask him about where he enjoyed more as a player playing, and I'm sorry, it was in Anfield and with yeah. the, in Liverpool, you know, because why I remember some games that, the, 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 you know, they were singing his, his, his song maybe for. 60 minutes of the game. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, it, was, it was unbelievable. And then you go to Barcelona. I, I remember when there to see him playing against Juventus two years ago when Neymar, or three years ago when Neymar is still on the team. And I remember singing Messi, Messi, maybe twice in 90 minutes. And you say, wow, in Liverpool they sing him. Now, Andy Robertson, Vicky Van Dijk, Alison, <laughs> Jurgen Klopp, like, they have like 20 songs of every <laughs> player, ex-players, they still sing it to Stevie, to Luis Garcia, to like every yeah. game so much. And you, you know how um, fans, obviously, they sing it and they're happy to do it. But as a player inside, how you feel when you hear him this is unbelievable. I remember when I used to play and then sing my name or like you say, maybe someone tried to pass me a winger or whatever. I didn't mention Hazard before, one of the best players I play against. But maybe try to pass you, you put your body and everything like that. You put him in the floor and everyone, oh, 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 oh. You know, like, wow. <laughs> it's, 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 in, it's incredible. It's incredible. So as a player, you can compare to play in the Premier League, and in this case, obviously, in, in Liverpool, that is the best team in the Premier League right now. I, I think after that speech, the, the, the player is definitely going to Liverpool host. Yeah, no, yeah. 100%. <laughs> if he's my player and he had a chance to go to Liverpool, I'm sure he goes to Liverpool. Yeah. OK, I, I wanted to just finish by asking you a little, a little bit of a daft question. Right, Obviously, right now, we can't really go outdoors. We can go out and get our exercise, but everything's sort of essential travel. So we can only go to the shops. We can only go to the park. We can't really sort of go out on family days out or anything like that. But uh, where I grew up was just down the road from uh, Nosley Safari Park. Uh, and I know you went to Nosley Safari yeah, Park I went. A, a, I went. a couple of times. So what, what was your favourite bit of Nosley Safari Park, Jose? Well, to be honest, they were amazing because uh, we asked them to go. I remember it was Suso. I'm not sure if Alberto was there yet. I believe I'm not sure if it was Alberto. Manquillo was there. Myself, I went a couple of times, yeah. But yeah. One, one of the times I went with other players and they were really, really good because that day they were close and the workers, they just came for us, you know, and, oh, we, and we see a little bit more inside. So I remember... They saw us the lion closer, they fed the lions and everything like that. I remember going in, into the where the lions are, you know, and I remember and I remember the lion was there, obviously in the cage, wow. you know. Yeah. Obviously they are not in cages, they are outside, but when they were inside, obviously it's closed because if not they kill you. You know, so they there and I remember going inside and looking, whoa, like you know, like <laughs> a massive face of the lion in there. So I was like, wow, that's that's that. <laughs> So it was unbelievable. It is an experience that I say to everyone that can go, it's an unbelievable safari. I really, really enjoyed it there. And they were the, the people that were there, they were amazing to us. They, they, we see the inside, how they, they are with the animals, they are unbelievable, how they treat them as well. And the monkeys are really naughty. I remember going with our car yeah. the first time, they break my two, you know, the, how you say the... the screen wipers. Yeah, wipers, yeah. yeah. And we were crying, laughing because when we were outside, <laughs> I see Suso's car coming out and I said, what the hell is that in, in top of the car? And it was a massive poo of a monkey, you know, <laughs> in the top of the car. We were taking pictures and crying, laughing. I said, oh, 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 oh. no one wanted to take the poo off. I said, please, Suso, leave the poo in there for us, please. We were crying, laughing. So, it's an amazing place, to be honest. It's a, it's a place that I really recommend to go. And if I go to back, I'm going back to Liverpool, to be honest, quite often because my partner is from, from Bolton. So we fly to, it's direct flight from Valencia on Fridays. Well, not now, obviously, but on Fridays and, and Mondays. And on the summertime, six months a year is Wednesdays as well. So I go once a month, one every month and a half. I go to England a lot. Well, obviously, I used to. And, and I go to Liverpool as well because Liverpool, I still in touch with so many people in there. And, 
and I've been for a game as well, so so yeah. it's, it's lovely, and, and I would love to go to the North East Safari again, because that experience, I love animals, I have a, a dog and two cats, so imagine, I love animals, they are one of the best things in the world uh, for me, and, and that experience for me was incredible, and you can see them close as well, and how much respect, and how they treat them as well, that's the good yeah. thing, you know, because a safari is more, I don't agree with Zeus, you know, they are in yeah, case, yeah, yeah. but I don't agree with that. But safaris, they are more in, obviously, free. They are all together. I don't remember how many lions, maybe six, seven lions together. So that was, that was nice to see, yeah. Brilliant stuff, Jose. Well, uh, thanks very much for taking the time this morning to speak to don't us. Worry. Re- really, to really enjoyed the chat. And um, I'm sure, yeah. hopefully, we'll see you among the fans again at a Liverpool match soon when, it, when football starts up again. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Hopefully, hopefully it starts soon. The most important is the health of everyone. You yeah, know, yeah. keep busy in these times. And then, obviously, I'm sure we, we will see Henderson lifting that trophy, 100%. Absolutely. All right, thanks a lot, mate. Cheers for everything. Okay, okay. thank you very much to you. Thank you. Cheers, Jose. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.